Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, and thank you to the organizers for letting me speak, giving me the slot. Um, my name is Achilles. Um I'm an engineer at Red Hat on the Image Builder team. And uh, today I want to talk to you about how we, I'm not going to talk so much about how we build images, but how we think about defining and configuring the images and uh, letting users sort of like uh, invent the universe of image definitions, let's say. Um, so one small thing I'd like to say, um, I don't know if this is a good idea, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using it if you, like some terms um, that we use internally. And with these things, it's always a little hard to understand. We're going to try and explain everything, of course. But it's always a little hard to know what other people are familiar with and, not, not, and what not. So if I use a term that's unfamiliar more than a couple of times, uh, raise your hand, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, keep the ball rolling so that I don't lose my audience. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get the show on the road. Um, a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I gave you a little bit initially, but um, so we build images. And uh, it turns out that building images is pretty easy. Um, but making sure they boot and that they're useful is a tiny bit harder. Um, so the trick is to sort of restrict um, users and the code itself um, so, you know, so that it's hard to build um, sort of invalid configurations or unusable things. Uh, but we also want to give users the power to sort of like explore the space of what, what kind of images you can build. Um, and these two things are kind of in op opposition to each other, right? So you can imagine a solution where, um, you know, you can only, like a project where you can only build five kinds of images or even one. Um, that would be really easy to test. You can't do anything else except build that one image. It always builds, it always boots, it's fine. It's just not a very useful project. Um, on the other hand, you can imagine a situation where you can build almost anything, but most configurations wouldn't work. So we kind of need to find the sweet spot there or sort of guide users um, and ourselves to only build things that make sense, uh, but also be powerful enough so, uh, so that it's useful. Um, and, and so what I want to talk about is our solution or like our way of thinking uh, where we sort of define abstractions about how we define images as configurations of components. And these components inform both the way we implement things in code, the way we, we define our own uh, sort of libraries, uh, but also how we, how we want to present these configurations to the user so that they know what we're doing. Um, so part one, let's have a look at Image Builder. Uh, image Builder builds images. Um, and let's have a look at like, the, um, first, you know, give a bit of an overview about what it looks like to use it. Um, and I'll talk a bit about, like I said, how we build images, but most of the talk is about how we define them and how we think about what an image type is or an image configuration is. Uh, this is Image Builder, is what it looks like when you want to build an image. This is Image Builder running on console Red Hat com. Um, and this screen shows sort of the first step of the image building wizard. Um, and uh, this is where the user sort of selects a target platform, which defines the kind of image that we're going to build. In this case, you can see Amazon Web Services is selected. So we're going to build an AMI type image and, and make sure it works with Amazon Web Services. Uh, by the way, Image Builder also works on premises. We have, um, it's not just the uh, a Red Hat product, but it's also a, a utility you can uh, run um, on your laptop and build uh, images from the command line or from Cockpit Composer or, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, th so this is like a follow-up step, sort of like halfway through the image creation process where users can sort of select additional packages to add to their image. Um, in this case, we, the, the user selected Nginx, so presumably maybe they want to run a web server. Um, and, uh, and, and what I'd like to do is sort of explain how these options and others like them, like selecting images or selecting the target platform, um, how they affect the process of creating the image and how we might be thinking about these configurations in the future. Um, 
So at the core of Image Builder, like sort of like the bottom layer of, layer of our uh, stack is uh, OS Build. And OS Build is a command line utility that takes in a manifest and returns one or more, more file system trees. Um, and uh, it does most of the work, well, it does the actual work of building the image. Um, and a manifest is a giant, well, not giant, a rather big uh, blob of JSON that describes a series of pipelines and steps. Uh, so you can see sort of here, like, there's an RPM stage, uh, there's an, the kernel command line stage, uh, host name stage. So these are all steps that sort of mo modify the file system tree um, in very specific ways to create a file system tree that resembles a bootable image. Um, OS build has, um, it's important to note, OS build has no knowledge of distributions or workloads or anything like that. It quite simply and very stupidly executes stages as described in this manifest and just returns whatever the result is at the end of the process. Um, this is sort of a simplified way of, simplified look of what the JSON object looked like. I just pulled out the names of the pipelines and the stages. Uh, and you can sort of see that each pipeline is bro broken down into a series of um, stages. And most of these stages have pretty self-explanatory names. If it looks like the name of a shell script, that's probably what it's calling. Um, so for example, the RPM stage installs pack RPM packages into a tree. The cloud init stage configures cloud init. Um, system D en enables services. Uh, you can configure the bootloader, install the bootloader, configure Nginx. Um, and uh, the nice thing about stages is that they define their inputs rather stri strictly, and they don't sort of expose the full, well, they don't always expose like the full uh, sort of like, um, breadth of what you can do with, a, with, with each thing, but um, they kind of, in a type safe way, modify the, the, the tree to, to create a bootable image. Um, and so, on its own, like I said, OSPIL doesn't really have any concept of what a distribution is of, or what it's actually doing um, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so it isn't very useful on its own, and no one's expected to write manifests by hand or even uh, understand the, um, the individual stages that we define. So we provide a library that, um, we provide a library that holds the sort of like the domain knowledge of what a bootable image or a specific distribution looks like. Um, and, how to, and the library knows how to create a manifest that will uh, accomplish that. Um, and it's within this library, which we call OS Build Composer, is, uh, is where we define the, the, the base images that we present to the user, like the AWS image that we saw in the first uh, second slide. Um, so, right, so again, following up, uh, sort of repeating again what, I, what I'm trying to say here is that OS Build makes no guarantees about what it's going to produce for any given manifest, uh, in the sense that a manifest doesn't guarantee anything useful or, uh, or bootable. OS Build Composer, on the other hand, uh, needs to produce images, well, it needs to produce, it needs to produce something that can be built and needs to match what the user, respect, uh, the user expected, right? And um, ideally, it should be useful, <laughs> usable. Um, and the easy way to guarantee this, like I said in the beginning, is to restrict user choice the smaller the configuration space, the fewer things that can go wrong. Um, and uh, this is sort of uh, what we have right now. So when we talk about image types, uh, like the AWS image type, uh, we refer to an image or an archive that contains an operating system tree. And it's sort of a predefined configuration um, that matches a distribution, a platform, and an environment, kind of like this a, a three-tuple configuration. Um, and additionally, the user can add their own little user customizations, like we saw in the example where the user can add Nginx to the, to the image build. And these user customizations here are basically only the real, um, they're the only real control a user has to affect what 
what will come out at the end, to actually like apply their own preferences to what they want from the image. Um, so for example, you can build a Fedora 38 image uh, that can run on x86 uh, in AWS and then add an Nginx to the, to the image. Or you can build something like a RHEL 9 image that runs on ARM in Azure and uh, add a 20 gigabyte OPT partition. Um, and, and to repeat myself a bit, in code as well as the user interface, to an extent, uh, it's these three first components that we use to sort of define the image types. Um, and, and we do that in a rather static manner. So, for example, if we, if we never explicitly added an image type that is called Fedora 38 on ARM on AWS, then that's, that doesn't exist, essentially, in our code. Um, so, uh, even though it's a perfectly valid configuration, we don't support it. It doesn't exist, uh, as far as we're concerned. Um, and, and, and so, um, each choice of these, uh, each, each choice of these components, sort of the distribution, the platform, which is like the hardware architecture and the environment it's going to run in, um, have very specific um, effects on the image building process. The, the, they, they're associated with different configurations of the stages we saw earlier uh, to produce an image. So for example, the uh, distribution sort of defines the base packages that you're going to need um, and, and repositories that you're going to use to download them. And then the platform, again, specifies a specific subset of those repositories and some additional packages for like the bootloader or the firmware. And then the environment, which in our example was sort of the um, AWS, you add additional packages and configurations to make the image uh, run there, run in, in that environment. Um, and so uh, we would like to sort of move away from this sort of static configuration situation uh, that I described earlier, where like everything is sort of defined as these static combinations of these three components. Um, and towards defining the effects that, these, that the choices of these components have on the image building process, and if we can define, if, if we can have like a well-defined set of what these things do, um, then our sort of like our, we can expand our configuration matrix to everything that's valid. Um, and so th this is the part of the talk where I describe where uh, things that don't yet entirely exist. Um, uh, so this is sort of like where we're moving, where I imagine that we're moving with the project. Um, and, and some things that might be more conceptual, for example, and might change in the near future. Um, but what we want to do is define the choices we saw earlier as abstractions in our code, uh, and then conceptually sort of, uh, well, in our code, but also conceptually, and then help us sort of reason about uh, what an image definition is and how we present these choices to, to the user. So we can go back to this sort of like breakdown of the, uh, of the components where we have the distribution, the platform and the environment, which before we sort of used in this sort of static way to define what an image type is, uh, and then a workload, um, which sort of defines what the image is intended for. And, and so the distribution, as before, you can imagine, like I think we all know what a distribution is. You, so uh, a platform, which is sort of the, which, it, which is, the hardware architecture, but maybe a bit more generally, it could be a specific device as well. Um, the environment, like we saw before, it could be a cloud environment like Amazon, uh, Azure, or, um, or Google Cloud, or it could be a, a bare metal environment. Um, and the workload, which uh, again, like it's sort of the intent of what kind of work the, uh, the operating system will be, the server will be running. Um, and you can, you, know, you can sort of think of the workload about the kinds of things that you would normally do at provisioning time. Uh, so installing packages, setting up configurations, and things like that. Uh, so we can sort of, sort of start selecting, uh, this, uh, we can go through sort of an example of how, uh, of how select, selecting each one of these components, making a choice in each of these components, 
has an effect on what kind of stages we will be running and what, how it will affect the, uh, the, the image building process itself. And so for example, you pick a distribution like Fedora 38, and that sort of restricts the repository, well, it selects the repositories, uh, all the Fedora 38 repositories. So if you're going to build a Fedora 38 image, you need the Fedora 38 repositories. Uh, you, if, if, if all you know is that you're building a Fedora 38 image, the, um, you start off with the base package set, which is uh, the, the core package group. And then if we're going to build this image, we need the Fedora 38 build environment. So that's all we have now. We only know that we're building Fedora 38, so this is what we start with. Um, and then you add on top of that the option that you'd like, you'd like an x86 image. So then you restrict the repositories to the x86 repositories. You don't need to be downloading anything else. And then on top of that, you need to uh, add, for example, the bootloader uh, packages for x86. Um, and at the same time, you need the stages in the build process to configure and install the bootloader. Um, so, and then at the next step in the environment, if you select you want it to run on AWS, uh, it'd be good to have the cloud server package group and the cloud init, which is how um, images get sort of like provisioned or configured at first boot through the, um, the AWS cloud console. And since we're installing cloud init, then in the stages, we also enable the cloud init service using the systemd stage. And then finally, uh, you might select a workload, like a web server, which would add a, an extra package, Nginx in this case. And then since we're adding Nginx, we also want to enable it and configure it. So that's an extra option on the systemd service, on the systemd stage in the manifest. And then uh, a uh, stage to configure um, Nginx. Um, and so if the effect of each of these components on the image creation is well defined, uh, we can sort of freely combine them. And we don't have to stay in this sort of like world of statically defined configurations. Um, and uh, instead, of in implicit, instead of explicitly defining valid combinations, we can sort of restrict the configurations only to the things that we know are invalid um, and then sort of like just let the space of valid, of known configurations exist. So we can sort of expose the entire configuration matrix in code to the user and, and know that any combination uh, it would, be, would be possible. Um, and so we're, we're thinking now about what choices we can, what choices should we give users and how can these choices map to the components that we're talking about here, the components that we defined. And so like the current state, like I said, is you have this sort of like static list of these, uh, these triple configurations here, the distribution, the platform, and the environment. And then you give user a few knobs to sort of like add some packages or tweak some configurations. Um, and and it, like it, it, it's sort of, this, uh, this, this config, um, these static configurations here are sort of exposed to the user, but not really. Like, it, the, there's a, if, if, you're, if you're on a system with a, um, of, a, of a given distribution, or if you're, if you're building for a specific distribution, then you're only limited to a handful of image types that we've already defined. Um, and sort of the identity of the image is, a sense, is essentially uh, this static, uh, the static configuration here, and then the user can sort of uh, just tweak a few things. And our new setup, on the other hand, sort of puts equal weight on each of these components. Um, so our question is, why don't we just expose all the components to the user, all the components, and sort of let them freely snap them together and, and create what they need? So, so um, what this would enable us is to sort of let both ourselves and the users define, uh, just select uh, each, configure each of these sort of components. Um, and what, what we do in, in turn is abstract away uh, sort of the meaning of these components in terms of 
the image build process, but not the meaning of what's going to happen to the final uh, to the final image. Um, and um, so my question here, the reason I'm talking to you all about this today is uh, to basically ask you, uh, does this sound like a good idea? <laughs> um, at least this is how we're thinking about things and like does this, is there something here that kind of, um, is, is there something that we missed? Is there, uh, is there a case that kind of wouldn't be covered by these configurations, by these components? Does it sound like a good idea to be able to just um, have an image like the one we saw, but instead of on AWS, you can just swap out the environment and have the same image for the same workload, just able to run on a different cloud service and be optimized for that cloud service. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you. Um, questions and comments are, of course, welcome. And uh, this is the website for our project and the GitHub repository for our organization. Question. So I do have a question about what is the motivation behind this project? I mean, assuming that you have a meeting like this conference and you decide to have, I mean, for me, I'll say I'm part of the user experience, most probably you could have predefined the users according to let's say case printout or they were just followed. So you go there, you decide to use what they are as a software decision, and then you set this all the images. Installation is going to be for some specific product. This is something prepared without knowing any, any knowledge about how you're going to do it. So you get the curated image and then you just send it out. I have this kind of let's say, information. But yeah. what was the evaluation behind this project? I mean, what, what is the reason of this project? All right, so the question was uh, what's the motivation in general? And I guess, I guess the extension to that was how does it differ from uh, if I'm getting like a base image and provisioning it and, and modifying it, uh, well, there's a couple a couple of answers to that. First, well, someone needs to be, build the base image, <laughs> um, and uh, there's uh, so there's a lot of alternative projects that do exactly what you said, which is like get the base image. It's just like in in our example, for example, it would be just get the base Fedora image and then add the bits to it to make it. Um, so there's a couple of things that this project does, uh, solves that, um, I don't know, that we think is a good idea at least. First of all, every time you build an image, you get fresh content, right? If, you, uh, if, you're, if you're building an image today to deploy it today, you're gonna get the up-to-date packages instead of maybe like needing to get an, uh, an image that was built a week ago and, or a month ago uh, and need to update it. You can, there's, uh, there's also the, the concept of like, you're building an image for purpose, uh, and it's, um, well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that are either impossible, to, well, better to do, or must be done at build time instead of provisioning time. Uh, there's, there, for example, I think uh, OpenSCAP is one. We have uh, like hardened images. You can build a hardened image with certain configurations, and taking an existing image, booting it, and then flipping those configurations uh, isn't considered uh, like compliant with certain security standards, for example. Um, I'm sure there's, uh, there's a few other reasons and use cases. Everyone on the front row can probably answer your question in a different way. Hmm? Partitioning, for example, is a good, yeah, is, is another way. Like, you, if you get an image, like, we, you, we can partition during build time create any partitions, that, almost any partitions the user wants, uh, and if you just get an image and deploy it to AWS, uh, you, can, you can add certain, you can add partitions after the fact, but uh, it's, it's certainly, not, well, I guess, like, if you, if you get a rel image and deploy it to, or a Fedora image and deploy it to AWS, you probably can't create a user partition uh, after, boot, after booting it, right? So there's a, cert there's a lot of reasons you want to, configure something before you even build it. I mean, if you can inject some user data and do so, basically you can like, customize it while you're like, trying to run the instance on AWS, for example, like you said. Yeah. Uh, so basically, what, what I'm trying to understand is that if, if, I, don't know if I don't have experience with this product, I'm just trying to understand if it's 
So the follow-up question was, uh, I guess it was to, well, the, the, the second part of the follow-up question was how long does it take to build and if it's provided as a service? Yeah. yeah. So yes, it is provided as a service. It's on console Red Hat com uh, now uh, for all Red Hat uh, customers. Um, and the image build time is, well, it depends on the image. Uh, it can be as low as, I guess, five minutes. Uh, up to, uh, I guess, 10 or 15 if you're building. And so like the, the cloud images usually take like between five to seven minutes. Uh, and we can also like deploy it for you directly to the cloud environment. Um, we, can, we can also build ISOs and those usually take a little longer. Repeating that, there's also the on-premise version that you can run. If you have an RPM-based operating system, you can DNF install OS Build Composer and uh, have it running and build your images. Now, um, ooh, I don't know who's first. You. <laughs> So the question was, how, do we, um, how does this model work for situations where you might know, not know the workload, you just want to build an image? Uh, well, uh, so it, well, first of all, the sort of like the workload situation is kind of optional. Uh, it doesn't need to be a predefined workload. Uh, the way it kind of works now, if we, if we map this sort of like new way of thinking about things to the old way, um, we would of course have a, a custom workload or even a null workload where you you don't get any extra packages, you don't get any extra configurations, you, you just get the base system. Um, obviously, you can't, you can't skip the selection of distribution and platform. That wouldn't make sense. Environment, uh, you could have like a base environment that sort of it doesn't belong to any cloud or anything. It, it's kind of just something, um, I don't know. It's just something that, that can uh, Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you can have think of, think of it as like, like the default is like a, a bare metal installation, for example. Uh, but that, that would totally be an option, right? It's like any, there's, there's same defaults, I think, for, for the environment and the workload that we can sort of think about. Um, and I'm also thinking of like when you're trying to layer in custom software. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how custom software fits into this model. Custom software, the, uh, the follow up question was how would custom software be layered in? Uh, well, that depends. Um, I mean, right now, we've, we already have the um, capability of letting the user define their own content sources. If you have an internal, in your company, an internal RPM repository uh, or a public one that's third party, you can just define it and pull content from there and, and it'll be installed. Um, we can embed containers at build time as well. Um, uh, I mean, any other ideas? We're open to suggestions <laughs> about how to get custom software. Yeah. Yeah. You can also inject custom files at build time for the on-premise version. You can just write a file, and, and it'll get injected at build time into the Etsy directory. Is there a question, or am I out of time? Question. Okay. Um, Do we integrate with Ansible? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. <laughs> yeah, there is in Ansible. Oh, so Ansible integrates with us? <laughs> 
Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's actually what I was leaning towards. Is like is the lock of the software there is not only just dropping the files, but also like executing them in a yeah. do say hook in there to prepare the wire. Yeah, which is sort of what OS build is doing. I mean not sort of, that's what OS build is doing. It's How much, uh, so first of all, how much, how much time do you have? Because this, this seems like a discussion for over there. Uh, and, and I think there were a couple more questions if we have time to get to. Uh, and there was one there before either. Uh, sorry, can, can I get some? Go. Oh, no, sorry, start, start again. I didn't hear anything. Oh yeah, of course. Well, the question is if we consider other platforms. And yes, uh, we can build, uh, ooh, OK. We don't have VirtualBox. It's hmm? it's yeah, we have, we, right. It's the same as, lip, OK, so we have VM. Right, and that's sort of the thing, right? It's not just about making the, the, file, the file format correct, it's also about knowing what does this uh, virtualization platform need. And um, you know, we're, always, we're always expanding, we're always adding more stuff. And that's sort of what part of the reason I, I, we're thinking about this, we're rethinking about how we put these things together is that if, for example, we said, let's add, uh, let's, add let's, do va let's do Vagrant, right? Uh, we would figure out Vagrant for RHEL 9, and then it'll be like, and, and then it, we would we would be thinking, okay, this is this is libvirt for RHEL 9 x86, and then we would have to go through that again and redefine it for every configuration. And now what we want to do is say, okay, what does what does uh, Vagrant need? It needs these things. We we define them in sort of like a well-defined way and how they interact with the other components, and then you can drop it into any configuration, and it should work. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so the question is, uh, if you if you want to do something that isn't covered by OS build, you need to write your own OS build stage. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's kind of the way to do it. Like, if if there's if there's some kind of configuration or um, I don't know, there's something that needs to be run at build time that o the OS build library doesn't cover with a stage, the answer is write a stage. <laughs> But the, uh, the, the, the best answer is write a stage and send it upstream, please, because we need them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that? No, it's not. One, one last question. Uh, okay. I was, well, there's someone behind me, and uh, I think you are the, yeah. <laughs> What if you want to? So the current state, yeah, the question was, yeah, the question was, um, uh, we have the, yeah, we have the manifest, we have the, the UI and stuff, but what if I want to version control my sort of set, my configuration, my image type, or what, whatever you're doing? 
Um, well, the good news is the, uh, the way you build an image on premises is with uh, what we call a blueprint, which is a TOML file. And uh, I'm out of time, but it's a text file. You can version it. We, we, also, can, we also support versioning. The, the way it works now, which might change soon, uh, but the, you, you write a TOML file which configures the image, and you push it into Composer. And Composer itself also has a versioning system, but that might be going away. <laughs> um, but it's text files. You can, yeah, you can version them. And even in Cockpit Composer, which is sort of like the web UI that you run on premises, um, you can click through and configure the image, and then you can export that configuration as a TOML file and save it wherever. Uh, and I'm out of time. Thank you all very, very much.